Today I'm going to be installing Audio Bookshelf. This is an audio media management program that is awesome for audiobooks and podcasts. This is by far my favorite self-hosted application. If you're interested in seeing what this is, come check it out. Over the last couple of years, there's been some controversies over the rights of consumers when it comes to digital media. Companies can just remove the option for you to gain access to media that you have quote unquote purchased through their services. And a lot of the conversations end up with the solution of self-hosting. Typically, they talk about things like Plex for TV shows and movies. Same thing with Jellyfin if you want something more open source. But it's rare that you ever hear anyone talking about audiobooks. Now that is where Audio Bookshelf comes in. And this is an incredible program for self-hosting your audiobooks and podcasts. The Audio Bookshelf website has really good documentation. So I'm going to use this to install on a virtual machine. I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to use the Docker Compose and I'm going to use a bare metal install on a Debian system. The first thing I want to do is create a virtual machine for this to run on. So I'm going to clone my template. Uh, I'm going to give this a VM ID. I'll just leave it at 101. And I'm going to call this one ABS for Audio Bookshelf. We'll do a full clone and then clone that. Now that my virtual machine is cloned and started, I've got an IP address. I'm going to SSH into the system and I'm going to do the install of Audio Bookshelf. All right, so I'm SSH'd into that virtual machine. I'm ready to install Audio Bookshelf. It's really simple. It's just a few commands. Uh, I'm just copying and pasting right from the Audio Bookshelf website because their documentation is phenomenal. I give them two thumbs up. So first we need to install these two packages. We're going to set up the GPG key for the repository. And then we'll set up the repository. It should be available now. And you can see right there, Audio Bookshelf PPA is on here. And then we'll install it. So I just want to make sure that the config file was created. So I'm just going to list Etsy ah, default. And you can see the audiobook shelf file was created. It should be running. And it looks like it is. So its default port is 13.378. So I'm going to switch over to my browser. And then I'm going to navigate to that IP. 168.240.105. And that was... Excellent. So Audio Bookshelf is running. You just need to create a username and password. So I'm going to call this one Hardwood Home Lab User. Give it a password. And down here it's showing you where the config path and the metadata path are within your file system. So I'm going to click Submit. And now I just need to sign in. I think I made that capitals for some reason. And as simple as that, Audio Bookshelf is up and running. You need to create a library and you can have that anywhere on your file system. You just add, find the path it's at, and then create. So that was quick and easy, but this is not how I'm planning on leaving it. So I'm going to delete this virtual machine and I'm going to do an install with Docker on my Docker virtual machine. All right, I removed that virtual machine that I'm not gonna be using. I've SSH'd into my Docker machine and in here, I'm going to start up Audio Bookshelf in its final form. So I want to move to the directory where I keep all my apps. And I believe I have that in MNT apps. In here, I'm going to create a new directory for 
audio bookshelf. I'm just going to call this ABS again and then I'm going to move into that directory. In here I want to create a docker compose file so I'm going to go vim compose.yaml and on the audio bookshelf website they've got a great docker compose template already created. I just pasted that in here and there's a few things we need to change. If you want to change the port you can right here uh, I'm going to leave it as is because I don't have any other service using that. And in here, I want to change the volumes directories that I've got. So I'm going to create an audiobooks directory, a podcasts directory right here, a config directory, and a metadata directory. And then I want to change the environment to use my current time zone. And that is ready to use. So I'm just going to write and quick. And now we can start it up. Docker compose up dash D. While editing this video, I realized that I should have added a restart policy on the Docker compose file. So I'll show you that now. Under services, I should have added restart policy of unless stopped and now I can update my deployment with docker compose up dash d again and that will update that restart policy now I want to access the service using my reverse proxy so I'm going to switch back to my browser I'm going to go to my nginx proxy manager I'll sign in, create a new host. I'm going to call this one abs.hardwoodhomelabdemo.xyz. That is the IP address of this host. And that port was 13378. You want to enable WebSocket support for this particular one. And then on SSL, we're going to use the wildcard certificate. Now to be able to access this, I need to be able to resolve that domain. So I'm going to go to dns.hardwoodhomelabdebo.xyz slash admin. I'm already signed in. I gotta go to local DNS. I'm gonna create a CNAME record for this, and that's going to be abs.hardwoodhomelabdemo.xyz, and I'll target my Nginx proxy manager, npm.hardwoodhomelabdemo.xyz. Great. With those two things done, I should be able to access this through that domain. And we've got another very familiar looking site. So we're going to have to create a user, password, now that that's created I have to sign in. And we're ready to start adding some libraries. You can have different libraries for different genres or whatever you want. You can divide up your audiobook library however you see fit. In this case, I'm just going to have one single library and I'm just going to call this one audiobooks because I am not that creative. And then I need to find the folder for that. And under the root directory, there is the audiobooks right there. I will select that and then create. I also want to create another library for podcasts. So I'm going to collect podcasts here. I'm going to get real creative with this one. I'm going to call it podcasts. And then I'm going to choose the podcasts directory in the root right there. And then I will create 
that library as well. Now, in order to use this server for audiobooks, I need to be able to put audiobook files into that bind mount directory that we created in that Docker Compose file. In order to do that, I'm just going to create an SMB share on my Open Media Vault instance. So I'm going to navigate to its IP, if I can type. And that was 161. I'll sign in. And I need to go under services, SMB, shares, and I will create a share. And I'm just going to use that Docker directory. I do not want this public because I want to be able to authenticate in order to gain access to it since this share is going to have all of the Docker files in it. So I'm going to click Save and Apply. And yes, I do want to apply these configuration changes. And now that those are applied, I just want to make sure that it's running and it is. So I've switched over to my file browser and in order to add a file to it, I'm going to click other locations. And on the bottom here, I want to connect to server. I'm going to use the SMB protocol. And that was called nast.hardwoodhomelab.demo right there. And here you can see the directory that I created for Docker. I'm going to have to authenticate to get in there, so I've got to give it a password. So you can see in here, I've got all the directories for the apps that are running under my Docker host. And I'm going to switch to the apps directory. In here, there's an audiobooks directory. And in here, I'm going to paste a audiobook that I've legally purchased from Audible. I've stripped the DRM. I've got it here in my downloads directory. It's It by Stephen King. What a tremendous book. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here in my audiobooks directory. I've switched over to my terminal here. I'm just going to take a look at the directories and yeah audiobooks is owned by Roots. I'm going to have to change that. Now I'm back into the file manager. I'm going to retry that. And now it is pasting in there. Now that I've got an audiobook on there, I've switched back to my browser and I'm on the audiobook shelf server. I'm going to go back to the home screen and scan my library. And you can see it found that book. Now we can set this up so that we don't have to scan manually. So I'm going to go to settings. Uh, libraries. I'm going to edit this under settings. I'll look. We've got an, uh, the uh, folder watch enabled so that should automatically detect if any files have changed within that directory and add it to the library but we've got under scanner, no schedule. Here we can schedule automatic library scans. This will run weekly according to this we can change that to whatever we want every day every hour you know what i'm going to set that to every hour and under tools nothing here we need so i'm going to click save on here and that will automatically update the library on here now the other tool that i like to use on here is podcasts. Now I love this for podcasts because it will automatically download new podcasts for anything that you're following. To demonstrate this I'm going to use my podcast so I'm going to click add and I'm going to search hardwood home lab. All right yeah I, I don't have a podcast. Okay I'll try somebody else's. We'll go Home Lab Show. There we go. And I want to set auto download episodes. I'll submit that. And now, whenever the Home Lab Show puts out a new episode, it's going to automatically download it onto this server. And I can listen to it from here. And if there's an episode that I'm missing, I can go search episodes. 
I'm going to select the latest episode and I'm just going to download that to this server just like that. I've now got two library files and this one is available for me to listen to. So if I want to listen to this, I can just click play and it's going to start playing that episode. So that just shows you two of the ways that you can use this server and you can add as many podcasts as you want. What's one of my favorite features about it is if you go to the audio bookshelf website, it does have apps on Google Play. It says it's got an app on the App Store, but this one's not actually there. It says you have to use a beta with test flight. I've never been able to get that to work. However, on Google Play, you can just download their app. Within the app, you just point it to your server. You can stream your audiobooks and podcasts within your local network. You can download them to your app so that you can use them while on the go, even if you don't have a connection to your home lab. Or if you've got a virtual private network set up, you can also connect anywhere using that as well. So this is my favorite feature of Audio Bookshelf, and I use it all the time. That's kind of how I'm going to leave things for today. My server is set up. I hope you find Audio Bookshelf as useful as I do, and I'll see you on the next one.